Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Planet Zoo. Now last week we made this lovely little barn that acts as a walkthrough habitat for our bats. There's something going on behind it though and it is to do with the three year anniversary of Planet Zoo. Now originally I had planned to make a start on our Red Fox Sanctuary as well as our Llama and New Shawalski's Horse Pens right behind the camera where you are now. But that's changed and today we're going to be developing this little area here which I have kind of mapped out very briefly for the new red deer which have just arrived with the latest anniversary update. Now as you can see we've got a, a very vague idea of what we're looking for at the moment. We've got this lovely habitat here with a little pool that kind of goes through to the other end and on this side I've started constructing a walkway for guests who will come off this bridge and walk around the outskirts of this area here because more habitats are going to be filled out all the way along there and that will eventually lead them round to an area that kind of links back up with the train station that's the plan anyway you also see doll sheep have arrived as well i thought considering this is a farmland area it would be good to have kind of a load of grazing animals in here and that just makes a little bit more sense to me in this area underneath this uh very poorly constructed hill you will also see a staff room a new keeper hut and my new trade center it's very basic and we may flesh that out as the episode goes on today is all about making this terrain fit nicely and constructing some lovely barriers and designing our red deer habitat i'm going to do the doll sheep at another time uh, probably on the same day i do the llamas but like i said i'd quite like to have a little bit of cross um like merging of these habitats so that I can continue breeding programs. So we may have some of these red deer move in with the Shawalski's horses and Shawalski's horses in with llamas, vice versa, all that sort of stuff going on. And we might split our red fox habitat into two. But we'll see how that all goes and let's dive into our speed build and work on our red deer build. So it's been a while since I did like a fully fledged outdoor build. Uh, like if you look at the uh, old town builds they're very enclosed spaces so it was quite nice to come back to this and as you can see we're starting with our rock work and you'll also notice that I did a little bit of terrain painting before we started this off and this is just something that I really like to do because it gives you an idea of the uh, the palette and the area with which you need to do your rock work and stuff like that so it you can obviously see wherever I have that rock texture I'm going to be using rocks to bulk it out and wherever I would have grass I'd be putting in some trees and foliage and stuff and then the soil is for little bits of rock work and extra like finishing touches with foliage and plants and stuff like that just to uh, really bulk out that area really good tip to just do that do like a nice flat color nice flat texture of your kind of rock or soil or sand or what have you and then you have that already as a base and any issues that you have where you've got little holes in between your rocks and stuff the texture will cover up that anyway so you're not having to do all of this terrain painting after you've finished building and it makes it a lot easier to kind of see the future of your build and uh, map that out a lot easier so we're just going through and building up our rocks to create a nice kind of rise into that hill because at the start it looked very very blocky and it didn't really have anything to it so we use these extra props to give it a really nice finishing touch and we just repeat this all the way around and make it look really cool so we're moving on to our foliage now i've done this rock work all the way around and you're going to see some of the older kind of methods of me creating videos when i do a lot and want to cram it into a shorter video we're not repeating doing this all the way around i don't want to show you the entire process but you will see some of them popping in so the next step is foliage and plants we come in with some moss just to give a nice little base coat and then we're going to add our first layer which is bracken and uh, bramble bushes just to give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional feel. So we just come in, put these in between some of the rocks and have them nicely kind of growing out of those areas. Uh, I really like using bracken and bramble bushes at the moment because they're the kind of invasive species and stuff that will kind of just grow on anything. They're, they're almost weed-like and they do have a tendency to overtake anything that they end up on. We put a little bit of leaf litter in and then I only want to use a certain number of plants within this build and they all have to fit in. 
I wanted to add a little bit of a pop to these, so we put in some tree stumps and fallen trees, and then we come in with our main plants. And as you can see, we're only going to be using a few different types. They are supposed to be matching up with the uh, deer who uh, they can have plants from temperate biomes that are in Asia and Europe. I wanted to put a nice little blanket of trees on to begin with. Obviously, these are all just bases and we can move them around or remove them all together. I just wanted to really flesh out the area so that it looked cool at the end when we do our little showcase, basically. Um, but they are places that I plan to come back. Anyway, I wanted to put in these Alpine Sea Hollies just because I think they're quite small stalked and they give a nice pop of colour. They also rise up quite high over any bracken and bramble bushes that we have in. So it once again is adding further dimension to this build, which I really like. Let's pop some more parts of this habitat in. There we have it. And our next one is over here in the main interior of the habitat itself. Again, it's all rock work, some azaleas, bracken and bramble bushes. And up here, I wanted to put in a pumping station that will facilitate the water flow going to our actual waterfall, which I'm going to talk about next. This was a really exciting thing for me. I had planned to do a waterfall on either side, but then it would kind of be like, well, how does that work? <laughs> um, that pool would obviously not um, <laughs> be able to be sustained if it was falling over the top of either side. So we're going to do a big waterfall on here that backs out onto our new guest walkway. And this walkway is going to take in a multitude of exhibits and habitats as it, walk, as it pulls around the main kind of body of water in Old Town. So it was really important to get this waterfall in. I really like playing around with the uh, mechanics of the waterfalls and stuff. So it was really nice to get back to that and do something really quite extravagant. It's been a long time since I did like a really intricate outdoorsy build. You'll notice like some of the other old town stuff is mainly just little pens and things like that. So it was really nice to come and do a little bit of terrain like modification and stuff and play around with levels and do some rock work because I haven't done it for a long time in fact since we started this series I don't think I've done anything that really pushed my limits in terms of my building skills within Planet Zoo. As you can see there's a couple of management issues happening while we're doing this build and that's simply because I need to run the simulation while I am testing out the uh, water features and things like that. Unfortunately we had uh, a couple of births and stuff take place and uh, the animal welfare kind of got a little bit out of control. I've not done a management update for quite some time uh, but you can see the bank balance is looking pretty healthy. Uh, I do want to come back and talk you through how things are going and maybe around about episode 15 when I've finished all of these new habitats we'll do a nice little management update that'll be a bit of a slower paced thing and we'll go around and look at things and I'll talk about where I want to develop and things. I think that would be a really nice uh, little treat to mark a milestone episode. Anyway, speaking of milestones, it's the three year anniversary of Planet Zoo and that's incredible. Like, I, honestly, I I think it's it, to be continuing to put out content and give rewards and stuff it just shows the strength of the game and how popular it is but also that Frontier as a, as a developer really cares about continuing to support a community and, and that's a really nice thing and I'm really quite like happy to be part of it so uh, that's something that I'm really looking forward to continuing and obviously it's inspired today's build the Red Deer which I think is a, a really like curveball of a, of a um, reward I was expecting some Something else and I, I don't know what that was but obviously there's some new additions as well with the update we've got there the animal shaped balloons and stuff which is really cool and there was a big community challenge today as well where you can release as many different animals as you want and you will get rewarded with um, full costumes for your avatar which is really cool back to this build though I've not used cattail reeds or anything for a while and I think they fit perfectly in here and then a couple of uh, broken cherry blossoms and stuff. I did put this up here but I think it's a little bit too dominant so it ended up getting moved right down to the bottom of the waterfall but you can see that it's really starting to take shape and I'm really happy with how this one turned out. It was nice again to play around with the water features and really give it a go. I've, I've not had a lot of practice with this, so it was it was nice to see how this one turned out. And apart from my um, Northlands build for the doll sheep, I think this has probably been my best water feature that I've designed in Planet Zoo. So I was really proud of it and I'm looking forward to adding a little bit more in. Coming around here, you'll see in the background there, I completely forgot to record this bit uh, where I built the pumping station. But I basically needed something that was uh, 
going to make the water seem appropriate for that area because it was just kind of plonked in there and there was no rhyme or reason to it. So I thought maybe building like a nice little water pumping station on here, that's maybe filtering the water and pumping it up from underground and then spewing it out into the uh, lovely river surrounding um, Arcadia and Old Town in particular. And I'm just going to show this next bit of rock work because we've already seen most of it, but I thought I'd carry on with the theme of showing how I do this sort of stuff. And I really like to start with having my rocks stick out a little bit more than they should. I would always leave yourself a little bit of room to manoeuvre when you're doing this sort of building, because if you get it wrong from the very bottom of it, you're going to have a hell of a time moving everything around and readjusting stuff. Whereas here, if you go up layer by layer and have it sticking out a little bit more than it should be, you can just grab the entire thing and move it all the way back into a more appropriate position. Now we're going to make a simple backstage area. I didn't want to do this one too over the top, and I originally wanted to use the breeze blocks, but they didn't seem to fit. And I do want to use these at some point. I think they're a great piece to use, but they really suit more of a, like an internal backstage staff area in like a back room of a shop or something. Uh, I don't think they fit very well as an exterior piece. They don't really have a great uh, attractiveness to them. So when you are looking at like a build in full, they don't really sit very well with it. That's besides the point. This does change over to our European brickwork because that is a favorite of mine. And I think it's a nice way to continue that build throughout. But what we are going to do is start using some different pieces as we move further away from Old Town. So we're moving off from that um, recommissioned town that has been changed and has already been there to some buildings that we have put in ourselves. Obviously because this is a farmland area I want to try and keep some like smaller buildings that were already here so you're going to start seeing some different clashes of building textures and tools and different materials as we move away from the main body of Old Town because like I said when we're doing this zoo we're going to be looking for ways to incorporate and merge different uh, themes and types of building so this is the beginning of that and as we move further away from that central district we'll start branching out into our different uh, themed areas of the zoo so bringing in our usual backstage pieces that i really like to use the uh, rounded uh, metal poles and the iron girders as well as i was going to create a little door here but i didn't think it fit well and the actual habitat door works well enough anyway so that's that's not too much of an issue we'll just make a nice little um, surround for it so you can see we've already removed some of the trees that were there and then we're going to start adjusting our barrier you can see animals have escaped but the game's paused so nobody's going to be running anywhere and i can safely adjust this barrier and put a new doorway in place that matches up with our actual entrance we then make the barrier a null barrier because i'm going to be designing a custom fence for it just uh, ignoring my issues with the management of the zoo for a little bit while I uh, sort out the rest of this build. Now we're going to finish off the actual house later on and then we are going to be putting in some hedges here and I'm going to line these with the twilight themed fence posts. So you're only going to see the top because the hedge is actually going to obscure the bottom of those iron fences. And I think that's a really nice touch. I, I like my fences to have like multiple different textures on them. And I think this worked really well, although I'm going to need to do a little bit of work to have it sit a little bit more appropriately with the rest of this area because it does have a little bit of a stark contrast and I'm not sure how I feel about it. So it may well be that we need to build something a little bit different in another part of this area just to incorporate this new fencing a lot more because at the moment it just looks a little bit garish in comparison with the rest of the stuff we've got here although we do use some of these hedges over in old town it would be quite nice to have a little bit more of that so that this sits in a little bit nicer with the theme and as you can see we're now going to have to adjust some of this staff path as well and that's it it's just a simple adjustment and it's much easier to move your path than to try and work around the air fence and, and make it sit a little bit more evenly that was one of the problems i had when i actually built a fence using this hedge work in old town i think it was where i was trying to hide that solar panel and that was quite difficult but we managed it in the end but this time it's much easier to do it this way 
Next, of course, we're taking out those breeze blocks and putting back in our European stone. And instantly after putting this in, it looks much nicer. It's a much better texture. It's got a much better feel to it. And actually, it makes those hedges blend in a little bit nicer as well. So we're just replacing the original breeze blocks we had here with some of these stonework pieces. And one little tip, make sure that they go in the opposite direction when you're using these pieces, because that's how you actually get those textures to merge nice and flat and it actually continues the pattern on the uh, brickwork so that it looks like those bricks in the uh, the join are continuing. I, I, this is something that I've just discovered. Uh, you learn something new every time you play this game. It's incredible. So, you know, just by playing and learning as you go, you'll have a really nice experience. I've seen a lot of people kind of ask on um, various Planet Zoo, like Facebook groups and stuff, uh, how people get good at building and it's there's no such thing as getting good at building you are as as good as you want to be but also you shouldn't really try and aspire to be those creators that are incredibly inspiring I'm not one of them by the way let's just make that very clear I'm an average builder and I'm quite happy at being an average builder I have some good ideas and my execution is sometimes a little bit wayward but I enjoy playing the game and I enjoy building so I'm happy to share any tips that I do have and I appreciate all of the comments that I get about how you know how much you enjoy the builds and how much you like them um, I'm ha I, I do need to address I have had a couple of workshop requests and I've not yet done them uh, but I will get them out there uh, I've got a bit more time next week for recording and stuff as well as uh, just doing a little bit of administrative stuff with uh, that so those uh, builds will go up on the workshop very soon anyway back to this very simple adjustments here. I was going to make this a little bit more detailed, but I thought I would just leave it for now and I'll maybe do a little bit of off-camera work in between these episodes just to finish these ones off. I am preparing and would like to do a full tour of the zoo and we'll do that once I've got these brand new habitats all fully finished and when I get a chance to do a little bit of touching up around the rest of Old Town because I'm aware that I've got some walls and stuff that I want to finish off there and I want to make sure that the... Uh, the area around the town itself and the water is uh, looking a little bit better than it is. I don't want it to be just that harsh terrain dropping off into it. So the rock work that I've done here, I'll very much be repeating. Now I had some trouble with the roof here. I wanted this to kind of just come right out, but I also didn't want a flat roof on the top. So it ended up getting a little bit of a weird unorthodox shape to it, where we go with these two roofs that have a slightly slower pitch and then into a double pitch roof which we then duplicated and put right across the middle after a little bit of tweaking. I put the eaves in so that they were all the way across and then I had a load of problems here without realising that I hadn't adjusted the grid height. It eventually went in though and then I tried to do the same with eaves here to block off the, uh, the stone that's poking through. That didn't work so we went back to the old faithful arctic wood to finish it all off and I created uh, a couple of skylights for the top of this building. We used some metal work just to cover the tops of the stone and then came in with some glass pieces. Now this was a little bit of a difficulty to uh, get right. I just wanted a single pane but it wasn't really matching up very well so I eventually went for some shorter panes and just put them in sequence to make the whole thing work. These ones were perfect and I actually I quite like the uh, little bits of texture in between the two uh, pieces so it fit nicely. And then we framed these with some arctic wood beams of course we did because i always use that piece and it is my go-to for stuff like this but it's all looking really good and these are the little details that really make things stand out and you don't need to always do these sort of things because the detailing in this actually comes with the foliage and the trees and stuff in the build which is why I felt comfortable with not expanding this too much and making it too detailed. Of course I would love to put some of the conservation pieces in here like shovels and things like that. I think they are now going to become like part and parcel of every single build that people do when they have these backstage areas. Uh, crates and stuff like that would go in and now we have the tools just to really finish it all off. And it was just a case of finishing off these last bits of the roof and uh, then we one thing i did forget to do was attach the path and when chaos was ensuing and my deer were getting uh starvation warnings i then finally realized that i had not reconnected the path so i did that very quickly and everything was okay so <laughs> happy days anyway back to this it was just a nice simple frame i tried with the girders so i could make that like texture 
flow into the next. It didn't work, so of course we went with the Arctic Beams. Coming out into our main habitat, I just wanted to add in a couple of pieces of foliage to really finish this one off and blend it in with the rock work that we have done up the side of it because the rock work and stuff that we've done so far is very much just a backdrop and is not actually part of the habitat. So we needed to do that in here. And it was just a case of repeating those same patterns, putting in our azaleas. I didn't actually use any of the alpine sea holly, but I did bring in the blackthorn bushes and put in a few more beech trees, mainly the saplings, but also some of the larger trees because I wanted to make a little bit of a forested area. Obviously here we don't have a lot of space and we've got that nice little water walkway that goes through. And you'll also see there's a deeper end there and then it merges into a smaller area as they go through into that little cave, which I thought was a really cool touch. It kind of happened naturally. I fleshed out this area and then put the, uh, the habitat barriers in. And then I was like, we, we're blocking off so much space here. And what I could have done is have this hill kind of a, a bit more of a traversable area, but it would then mean I'd have to do a little bit more rock work on top to block off escapes or do an, a, a newly constructed fence. And I don't feel quite ready to do that. And this looks like a much more natural build that I'm really, really happy with. So we brought in some asters and I think we've used a couple of different plants here as well. Uh, but not too much different. Uh, I forgot to mention we do have some, um, oh my god, I can't remember what they're called, aloe vera plants in here as well. And then we brought in some of the twilight stalactites, which I just recolored. I don't think I got the color quite right, so I may need to play around with that a little bit later on. It, it doesn't quite sit right for me, but I'll maybe have a look at some of the forums because they do have the uh, color codes for specific rocks and how you can match up the faux rocks, so that might actually work with the stalactites as well. Back to the rest of this build, we wanted to create a nice um, habitat exhibit board because we don't have any educational material here yet. So. I wanted to make something from scratch rather than just using the uh, basic ones. You can see just before we do this though, we're just making a little bit of an adjustment here to the actual terrain around the habitat itself. I've taken out a few bits and pieces because it, it looked a bit mishmash and I wasn't quite happy with it. And you can see there, that's when we realised that the uh, habitat was inaccessible. I very nearly started this whole thing off again without realising that my keepers couldn't even get in there. Of course, it didn't really matter because there was no path. And actually, that just makes me think as I'm recording this, were they only inaccessible because I hadn't put the path in? Anyway, back to this. A very, very simple education board to be designed now. I wanted these um, wooden boards to uh, extend above the uh, stonework, and then we were just finding some nice little surrounds. Again, we used the Arctic wood ones because I think they fit really well. Brought down a couple of frameworks and then moved up the whole thing. And then I wanted a backdrop, and we used some of these bits of fabric, which we then dyed in the colours of... House Baratheon from Game of Thrones, because I thought, why not do a little nod to that as well? <laughs> Seeing as the Red Deer is uh, a very symbolic, and the Baratheons do have the Red Deer as their sigil. Don't think it's a Red Deer, it's just any sort of deer. But we put these education boards in throughout the habitat on either side, so there's four of them all together. And then we did the, very much the same colour scheme for our donation boards. I know there's no escape chance here, but I just wanted to adjust the barriers a little bit more so that there was a bit more space. I don't really want any warnings coming up where we have an animal escaping, even though they don't actually have any way out of the habitat. The warnings are quite annoying, and I think they do lead to refunds, whether a guest sees an escaped animal or not. We put some cornflower down here just to really end the... Uh, design work on the uh, foliage but overall I'm really happy with this build I wanted to put a little bit of bramble bush work coming in over the feeder because I don't like just slapping a feeder down or slapping like little bits of enrichment down I much prefer to have them in situ and look like they're part of a natural habitat Finally, we come to our final bits of rock work. I'm aware I said final a few times there, but uh, we're, we're, we'll go with it, it's fine. <laughs> um, I was, I'm really, really happy with how this one's turned out, and I'm very excited to show you some of the uh, footage that I've captured. So we're just finishing off these last bits of rock work before we go on to our final tour. I was going to leave this one uh, and consider it part of the doll sheep habitat, but I thought for the sake of just finishing this build, it would be good to really complete every single bit of rock work we've got going on around here. 
Uh, 60 points to you if you manage to tell me how many times I've said rock work in this episode because it was all about building with rocks and playing with stones. So <laughs> again, we come in with our azaleas. And one of the things I just want to say is I know I've used a lot of very similar foliage here, but I think it looks better when you have similar types of foliage coming through because if every like bit of a build you do you have a different plant there's no real blend and no real like law to it I guess it do, it looks a bit unnatural and I'd much prefer to have the same kind of three or four flowers within a build the same bushes and stuff like that because it looks like they're supposed to be there you don't get a lot of different species of flower in one place they're normally a certain few that grow in that area so that's kind of why I do that and justify that to myself and justify it to you guys now the one thing I'm not overly keen on is the top of this habitat I think the way that the landscape merges in with those rocks at the top there is a little bit unnatural so that might need some work whether that's adjusting the terrain itself or moving some more rocks further up anyway we put our donation boxes in I've not yet put any audio descriptions in for this one but it's time to go on to our little showcase just before I finish. I'm putting in a few more bits of um, decoration on this pumping station because I didn't think it was very well fleshed out. So we took away some of those two windows there and put in this stained glass of the deer. Obviously it's the European fallow deer, but that doesn't really matter. By the way, shared enrichment for both species of these deer. So if you have them in the habitat together, they get into species enrichment. Just a little tip for you if you wanted to put them in together. And the last thing, I wanted to move a couple more trees in and make it look like this one was part of the scratching post. Let's get to our tour and I just want to thank you all again one more time for watching. I hope I've done enough to earn your subscription if you are new here and I hope you enjoy these final pictures and images from Old Town. <laughs> the farmland area of Old Town and our red deer habitat. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time. Bye bye.